Hi, I'm Don Sheehy, and I'm going to give a short tutorial now on a topic that I think is very relevant to topological data analysis. I'm going to talk about the topology of post sets. So it starts with this challenge that that comes up in TDA all the time. In some ways, I think it's it's almost the first challenge because uh, if you're going to do topological data analysis and you have a finite data set, you would like to find some interesting topology to analyze. And so there are a bunch of ways of doing this, some common things. For maybe the first thing uh, most people think of is graphs. Uh, graphs naturally give you some topological structure from something finite and combinatorial. Another really common thing in topological data analysis is to look at metric spaces. This is where we get things like the via torus rips complex and filtration, etc., which gives some, uh, some interesting topology to, again, let's say a finite metric space. And the third one, which is the one we're going to talk about here, is to look at post sets or partially ordered sets. So what is a post set? Uh, a partially ordered set, it's going to be a set X with some relation, we'll call it less than or equal to, it's a binary relation, and it has to have uh, these three properties, namely that it's reflexive, transitive, and anti-symmetric. Um, not all pairs are necessarily comparable. If all the pairs are comparable, then that would be what's called a total order. And if I have a post set and I want to give it some uh, topology, especially a finite post set, uh, I might try to turn it into something called a simplicial complex. Now, a simplicial complex is also a nice finite combinatorial object. Uh, it's got two sets. I'll call them X and S. X here, we're going to call these the vertices. And S here are the simplices. And the rule is simply this, that um, every simplex has to be just a subset of the vertices. And the simplices are closed undertaking subsets. So I'll give you a concrete example in a second here. So if I take a subset of a simplex, the subset is also in the simplex set. So we often draw them like this. You can see the singletons get drawn as just a dot here. Uh, pairs in the simplex set get drawn as edges. You can think of triples as triangles. And of course, if we have this triangle, this rule says that we also have the three edges and the three vertices. Okay, so that is a simplicial complex. That is one of the most natural combinatorial objects that you can um, start to talk about the topology of. Now, how do we get a simplicial complex from a post set? Well, it's quite easy. Here's our post set. It's a set X with this partial order relation. We're going to build what's called the order complex on the post set. And it's going to be a simplicial complex that has uh, the same uh, vertex set, is the same set here. And the simplices are just going to be subsets that are totally ordered. Another uh, name for totally ordered subsets of a post set is called a uh, flag. It's also sometimes called a chain, although I'm going to steer clear of the word chain just because uh, if you want to start doing a homology on these, then chain starts to take on a very different meaning. If I have a totally ordered subset, like A is less than or equal to B is less than or equal to C, that means I have A, B, C is going to be a simplex in this uh, order complex. Now, the transitivity of this relation implies that any subset is also totally ordered. And so it is going to be closed undertaking subsets. And so all the subsets I get like this really will give me a simplicial complex. All right. so. We can turn a post set into a simplicial complex. How about going the other way? This is a, a natural question you might ask, is that if I have some kind of topological space, maybe I can turn it into a post set um, or extract a post set from it. Because a lot of combinatorial topological objects really do have this kind of post set structure. So one example uh, that is easy to think about, I think, is just a cube. So if I have this cube, uh, it has vertices, edges, and faces, 
and we have this post set relationship, which is incident, the inclusion of faces. For instance, a vertex is a subset of an edge. Right? If the edge, you think of that as a closed line segment, and the two-dimensional faces of that cube contain both vertices and edges. So I get that kind of post set just from inclusion. This is also called incidence in the vocabulary of polyhedral theory. And in that language, we would call these vertices the zero faces, the edges the one faces, what I just call the faces of a cube. Well, those would be the two faces. And actually, the cube itself even is a three face. All right, and this is a nice post set. In fact, for a polyhedron, it's, a, it's actually called a lattice. It's a post set that's closed under meets and joins, but maybe that's a topic for another time. So if I were to look at the order complex associated with the incidence post set, well, I can sort of try to pick out, say, what those simplices of the order complex looks like. Like I could draw, um, well, obviously I have a vertex for every vertex, but I also have a vertex for every edge. I have a vertex for every face. In fact, I have an edge if there's an, uh, this one face contained in this two face. I also have an edge for this, because this zero face contained in this one face. And an edge here because this zero face is contained in this two face. And then I also get the triangle. And so if I were to write down all of these incidence relationships and uh, look at all of the flags in that uh, post set, then I would, I would actually decompose my cube into tetrahedra. And it's kind of a cool fact that this order complex of the cube as a post set decomposes the cube into simplices. And that works for any polyhedron. That's called the barycentric subdivision. The name here comes from the fact that if you want to pick a canonical point, uh, where I just drew it somewhere in here, but you could actually take the barycenter of a or convex polyhedra, you could put, put the points right at the barycenters and that gives you a canonical decomposition. And that works for any polyhedron. But that's, you know, maybe, maybe that's not as satisfying as you were hoping for, because I told you I was going to do, you know, topology to post sets, but instead I did geometry to post sets. So let's make it a little bit more topological. So we're going to replace my polyhedra with finite CW complexes. So I won't give the full definition here, but the idea is that we build up a CW complex by gluing disks according to their boundaries. So there's going to be, here's a one-dimensional disk, it's just a closed line segment. And I look at this attaching map, which I'll call F, which maps just the boundary into the existing uh, complex. So I'm gluing it in along its boundary. So the in interior kind of stays disjoint and its boundary gets glued in. And, I, and the result is this. So I can build up a CW complex by iteratively gluing in disks. There is a rule that when I glue the boundary in, it has to hit the lower dimensional skeleton. So for instance, here I have a one dimensional cell. When I map its boundary in, it has to land on vertices. Here, I have a two dimensional cell. I map its boundary in. I have options here on how I do it. But however I do it, I have to map the boundary onto vertices and edges. That is, this one dimensional thing has to land on the one dimensional skeleton of the complex. Now, if it maps to the entire uh, cycle, in a one-to-one -one way, I would get a CW complex like this. But I could, for instance, map the entire boundary to just one vertex, in which case I would get this kind of loop here, the cycle, plus a bubble sitting on the end. So how the attachment maps actually do the attaching will determine a lot on what the resulting complex will look like. All right, so CW complexes are now a little bit more topological than just polyhedra, and from a CW complex, you can extract a post set. And I'm just going to say we do this by what's a new kind of incidence relationship. Um, but the incidence relationship is simply defined by, let's look at it for an edge. If when I glue an edge in, go back to the same example, if I, I hit these two vertices, then these two vertices will be incident to that edge. And the points in the post set, the underlying set, will just be all the cells we glued together to produce the complex. And so a natural question you might ask, if I have a complex like this, and 
Um, well, I can ask, is it the same topologically? Is it homeomorphic to the order complex of this post set that I just associated with it, this incidence post set associated with that complex? And the answer is complicated. Um, but maybe the shortest answer is that, the, that we might just say, well, sometimes. I better put a question mark here so you don't think that's a, a theorem statement. All right, so here is an example where it is the case. Um, so I've got a CW complex, A, B, C, D. All right, so this is a CW complex that's clearly not just a bushel complex, at least according to the definition we've given. And if I were to draw the post set, um, well, we would have uh, A and B are both less than edges, C and D. They're both contained in there, C and D. And if I were to look at the order complex associated with this post set, it's quite simple that there's only going to be, well, there's four vertices, and the only flags in this post set are going to be these pairs associated with the edges. So I can draw it like this, and it makes it quite clear that I have just these simplices. And this actually looks a little bit like, a, again, a kind of very centric subdivision of this uh, complex. All right, so that's an example of a CW complex where if you look at its po the corresponding incidence post set and you take its order complex, you get the same uh, thing in the end. In both cases, they're just a single uh, S1 circle. Okay, but sometimes it doesn't work out so nicely. So here's another circle. You can also realize a circle by having just one vertex and one edge. And what you do is when, when constructing this CW complex, you just map both ends of this edge to that one point. As a post set, it's also, again, quite simple. There's simply one vertex and one edge. And the order complex is also just the one vertex and the one edge. And so the complex itself had a cycle, um, but afterwards, its order complex of the post set does not have that cycle anymore. So I had something went wrong. I definitely lost some interesting topology in this process. But if you want to get it back, or at least you want to not lose it in the first place, you can do this as long as you restrict yourself to something called regular CW complexes. So if those attachment maps are all homeomorphisms, then the complex is called a regular CW complex. And you can see in this case, it's definitely not the case. I mapped both endpoints of the edge to the same vertex. And so that map is certainly not a homeomorphism. And so if, if um, I look back at this one, I did not have this problem. This actually is a regular CW complex. Um, and in those cases, in any such case, the complex is going to be homeomorphic to the order complex of the post set of the complex. So there, is some, there are some interesting cases where this really works. And just to, to recap the whole thing, um, we started with post sets and we talked about the order complex as a way to get a, some kind of topology on a post set. And we also saw that sometimes you can go from some kinds of complexes to a post set, say CW complexes. And I should be careful here to note that what I meant by top here is really simplicial complexes. And in the case where they were regular CW complexes, you can kind of go round trip and end up topologically the same. Now this has immediate computational implications because if you wanted to do computations on a CW complex, it means that if you could guarantee that the complex was regular, then it would suffice to store the post set. Because right? that would mean that the post set actually stores all the information you need in order to talk about the homeomorphism type of the underlying CW complex. All right, so this is uh, post sets, uh, finite post sets, and topology.